Hello photo pillars. I am Rafael Pons and in this video I'm going to show you how to photograph the great conjunction between Jupiter and Saturn that's happening this month. Actually, as I am speaking, as you're watching this video, the two planets are getting closer and closer. But it will be on December 21st when the both planets will be super super close. They will be only 0.5 degrees apart. Something that has not happened for four centuries since uh, 1623 and it won't happen again till 2080 and unfortunately I'm afraid that most of us will be under the ground by then. So this is our great opportunity to live and capture this rare astronomical event. Long story short, subscribe to the channel and let me show you how to plan it, all the gear you need and how to photograph it step by step. Let's go! Go to photo bills and tap on planner to plan the conjunction, the first thing you need to do is to place the red pin you see on the map on the location you wish to photograph it. In my case, I have it in Menorca, next to the Punta Nati lighthouse, this beautiful lighthouse here. Now, set the date to December 21st. To do it, just double tap on the time bar to set the date to today and now. And now, just swipe the time bar till December 21st. Here we have it. This is on Monday. Cool, on the map, the thick orange line you see is telling me the direction of the sunset and the top panel is telling me the sunset time. This happens, sunset is at 5.23 pm. Both the direction and the time are important because the conjunction will be visible in the southwest directions around sunset, uh, around the direction of sunset, after sunset. So you need to wait until it gets a bit darker. This is when you'll see Jupiter and Saturn above the horizon. You can't miss them. Above all, you can't miss Jupiter. It will be visible to the naked eye. Not considering the moon, Jupiter is the brightest celestial body in the night sky, so you can't miss it. And next to it, you'll see Saturn, a bit smaller and less bright. I recommend you not to wait until December 21st to try to locate them, to plan your shot. Try today or tomorrow. The sooner the better. So go to the location you wish, wait till the sun sets and try to locate Jupiter and Saturn in the sky. Plan your shot and why not photograph them. Take advantage of the days with clear skies. You never know what's gonna happen on December 21st. Okay we have the plan, let's talk about the gear now. To photograph the conjunction you'll need your camera of course, sturdy tripod and head, and an intervalometer or shutter release. The less you touch the camera, the better. The last thing you want is to introduce vibrations into the system that will produce blur images. So use an intervalometer or a shutter release. It's super, super important. The lens choice depends on the image you wish to capture. On the one hand, use a wide angle lens. You want to introduce the landscape in the photo. In this case, Jupiter and Saturn will appear as a bright dot in the sky. Use it, use this bright dot in the sky as a key element in your composition, you know, to play with your foreground, with your subject. It's gonna be pretty dark, so if you're shooting a single exposure, you'll probably need to light paint the foreground. Another option is to shoot two exposures, one for the sky and another for the foreground, and then blend them in post. On the other hand, if you wish to shoot a close-up of uh, the Jupiter and Saturn, both planets, for getting the foreground, Use a longer lens. The longer the lens, the better. 500 millimeters, 1000 millimeters, 1600 millimeters. Use a teleconverter and use a telescope if you can. Also, if you have an equatorial mount, a star tracker, use it. It'll help you shoot long exposures and thus you'll capture more detail in Jupiter and Saturn. And if you capture the moons of Jupiter, you'll see them forming a straight line pointing to Saturn. This is because the orbit of the planet and its moons happens in the same plane, known as the ecliptic plane. Just a curiosity. Great, now that you have the plan and the gear, let's see how to photograph this great conjunction with both. When you wish to include the landscape in the photo with a wide angle lens, and when you want to center the viewer's attention on Jupiter and Saturn with a telephoto lens or even a telescope. Let's go! You'll be shooting after sunset, so in low light conditions. Therefore, arrive before sunset and look for your composition. Fine tune your composition. Choose the focal length that gives you the composition you want, the framing you want, and get ready to adjust it when you start seeing Jupiter and Saturn in the sky. Get ready to move around until you find the best shot possible. When ready, set the camera to manual. As natural light goes down, you'll be forced to use a wide 
aperture like f1.1.4 or f2.8 use the widest you can regarding the exposure time use the longest you can that keeps the two planets as bright dots in the sky not trails try 5 seconds 10 seconds 20 seconds and so on you know to see the difference you can also use the spot stars calculator in photo pills to calculate the shutter speed you need to use to prevent trails we use it a lot when photographing the milky way to avoid star trails to get the stars as big bright dots in the sky not trails and you can use the spot stars calculator for the conjunction too to learn how to use the spot star calculator just watch this video Watch it. Given the aperture and the exposure time, set the ISO that gives you the right exposure. Probably as it gets darker and darker, you'll have to push the ISO up to 800, 1600, 3200 or more. Adjust the ISO accordingly to get the exposure right. Where to focus? Well, there are a few options you can choose from. If you have an interesting subject in the foreground, I recommend you to focus at your subject. Actually, I recommend you to calculate the hyperfocal distance and make sure that your subject falls behind it. This way, when you focus on your subject, you'll get both in focus your subject and also the planets, the conjunction. What's the hyperfocal distance? Well, watch this video and learn how to use it. We use it all the time. If you wish to have Jupiter and Saturn super super sharp, focus on Jupiter and Saturn. But be aware that you'll lose sharpness in your foreground. Also, you could focus stack. Shoot a multiple shots focusing at different places, the foreground, Jupiter, and stack them in post to have all the elements in the image crispy and sharp. Finally, if you're getting a too dark foreground, line paint it. You can use a torch or a few LED panels to add light from the side so you capture a really nice foreground with volume and texture. Now take a few test shots and look at the foreground, the exposure and the focusing looks great, looks good. If not, make the necessary adjustments. If you wish to shoot a close-up of Jupiter and Saturn, not forgetting about the landscape, use the longer focal length you can, 500mm, 1000mm or more. Use a teleconverter and you have a telescope, use a telescope. The longer the better. Set the widest aperture of your lens to capture as much light as possible. But if you use a motorized equatorial mount, I recommend you to close the maximum aperture by one stop or two stops to get a better image quality. For example, from 2.8 to f4. Where to focus? Easy. Focus on Jupiter. Now set the shutter speed to half a second or one second. Don't go over one second because due to the rotation of the Earth, if you go over one second, you'll get a blur view of the planets. Of course, this is not true when you're using a motorized equatorial mount to track the planets. In this case, test different shooting speeds from one second to 10 seconds and see the difference. Finally, given the shutter speed and the aperture, set the ISO to 800, 1600, 3200. But if you're using an equatorial mount, probably you won't have to push the ISO above 800. And finally, take a test shot and check that everything looks good. If not, just make the necessary adjustments. And this is how you can photograph the great conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn. If you have a question, leave a comment below. And if you wish to learn how to photograph and other cool astronomical events, I'm leaving a link in the description of this video to our super detailed astronomical events photography guide check it out and if you like this video give me a like subscribe and click on the bell to get notified when i release the next video and as always remember that you have the power to imagine plan and shoot legendary photos bye